Welcome to the Village Board of Trustees. This is the regular meeting. I would ask everyone once again to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance as we open the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And once again, let us remain standing for those of you that are joining us now. Let us remember that 79 years ago, President Roosevelt declared that December 7th, 1941, would the day the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor would remain a date which will live in infamy. This evening, as Americans, please take a moment to remember the ultimate sacrifices our United States military servicemen and women made on this day and those days that followed the attack on Pearl Harbor. Thank you. Once again, I'd like to have a roll call vote. Trustee Barone. Present. Trustee Corrigan. Present. Trustee Alpert. Present. And Trustee Salberman. Present. And with me, I have the village clerk, Ms. Amy Paffenroth. And on the agenda, um, well, we'll go through the upcoming meetings. The next workshop meeting is scheduled for Monday, December 28th at 7 p.m. And a regular meeting of the Village Board of Trustees will be held on Monday, January 4th at 7 p.m. I would ask permission from the board to jump to number six, the police department and letter C, authorizing the nomination and appointment of police officer William Samora to sergeant. And I have Chief uh, Lachlan with me. Chief, would you like to say a few words? At this time, it's my great pleasure to request that the Village Board appoint Police Officer William Samora to the position of Police Sergeant effective December 7, 2020. This promotion will fill a vacancy created by the promotion of Sergeant Martinez to the position of Lieutenant in November of this year. Officer Samora is a lifelong resident of the Village of Suffern and currently resides here with his wife and two children. Officer Samora joined the Suffern Police Department in 2014 and has been assigned to patrol ever since. In addition to his duties as a patrol officer, Officer Samora also serves as one of the department's field training officers, a general topics instructor, the PBA president, and he also acts as the department's assistant accreditation manager for the New York State Law Enforcement Accreditation Program. Prior to becoming a Suffern Police Officer, Officer Samora served the community, the Suffern community, as a volunteer with the Round Po Valley Ambulance Corps and later as a paramedic with the Rockland Paramedic Service. He is also currently an active member of the Suffern Fire Department and the Hook and Ladder Company. Lastly, in addition to his dedication to emergency services within the village of Suffern, Officer Samora is a member of the United States Air Force Reserves, where he has served our country since 2007 and is currently a Master Sergeant. He is currently assigned as a First Sergeant and acts as his, squadron's com his squadron commanders principal advisor on enlisted matters. Officer Samora has been deployed overseas to combat zones for multiple tours of duty since joining the Air Force and despite this has been able to manage his work, family and volunteer responsibilities, which is a true testament to his character. Officer Samora has consistently gone above and beyond what is required as a patrol officer. And in my opinion, is very deserving of this promotion. Thank you, Chief. I have the resolution before me nominating and appointing William Samora to the position of police sergeant, whereas the Village Board of Trustees in their capacity as police commissioners have determined to provisionally nominate and promote a member of the police department to the sergeant's position that is now vacated by Jose Martinez's appointment to police lieutenant. And therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees in their capacity as police commissioners hereby nominates and appoints suffering police officer William Samora to the provisional rank of police sergeant effective December 7th, 2020. And be it further resolved, the starting salary for William Samora as provisional police sergeant is $159,982. And his compensation and benefits shall be in accordance with the existing collective bargaining agreement with the suffering police Benevolent Association. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee, Trustee Barone. Barone. Trustee Barone, do I have a second? Trustee Alpert. 
Trustee Alpert, and on the discussion. I would like to say that I don't think there's a better pick for the police sergeant to serve in that role as police officer Samora with his military service. I thank him for that service of 13 to 14 years, his volunteer paramedic service, his service to our community in the Suffering Fire Department, and of course his service in the police department. Thank you, Mr. Samora, uh, police officer Samora, soon to be sergeant, thank you very much. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Congratulations. I will have the village clerk now swear in Sergeant Samora. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the village of Suffering Police Sergeant. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the village of Suffering Police Sergeant. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Um, at this time, I would just ask that uh, Mrs. Samora can start really Sergeant Samora's badge on. Congratulations. 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 Okay, thank you very much for that jump on the agenda. Chief will be with us in a few moments when we get to his section. Okay. Bear with me, I messed up the resolutions here. Okay. Mr. Janito on the audited financial report. Uh, yes, Mayor. We have Donna Lee Berard of Berard and Associates with us uh, tonight. Donna Lee, um, you should be able to unmute yourself at this point. And there, there we are, we see you on the screen. Hey, yep, yeah. can everybody hear me? Yes. yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so as a way of introduction, our fiscal year runs from June 1 uh, through May 31, and our most recently completed fiscal year was May 31, 2020. Uh, as, as required by law, we do a audited annual financial report. Uh, Berard and Associates are the CPAs, independent CPAs, that audit our report, and uh, as such, uh, they typically like to present a very highly summarized form of information to the board in terms of how we did uh, in this past fiscal year. So with that, I'll leave it to Donna Lee to go ahead. All right, great. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody has a copy of the report so I can quickly run through the sections. If not, I also wanna just make the offer that if anybody wants more details or if they wanna contact uh, contact me, um, please do. We're, we're actually proud to be a Suffren located firm as well. So we, uh, we like to support Suffren. Um, the audit report is got many uh, components to it. Uh, the start, you know, the first part right at the, at the beginning is going to be the actual audited letters. Uh, the page that I would turn you to if you have that with you is page nine. The second paragraph on page nine is our opinion letter. And in the opinion, just read this quickly. It says, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects, the financial 
prospective financial position of the government activities, each major fund and the aggregate remaining fund information of the villages suffering as of May 31st, 2020. So this is the unqualified opinion that you, that you want on your audit report. The next section of the audit, I'm not gonna actually review, it's called an MD&A, it's management's discussion. It talks a little bit about the village and some of the highlighted uh, numbers in summary. The next section, I'm not gonna really go over much either. It is the, uh, the, the financial statements actually contain two sets of financial statements. One is the GASB um, governmental required accrual basis. And the, uh, those, those statements are paid, found on page 19 and 20. They're really not uh, something the board is, is really concerned with at this time. On the accrual basis, the, uh, we include a lot of the um, employee benefit costs, your future accruals for lifetime. It actually uh, has, uh, books a lot of liabilities in there. Um, you know, if we were to look at those pages, it would show that you actually had a $14 million loss for the year. We added to the other 28 million of accumulated, $42 million loss. It's not really reality. It's not what you're concerned with in regarding to the budgets. What's really important is if we take a look at the financial statements, if we go to page 29, so that would be really where we wanna look. These are the fund statements. These are the, uh, the financials that are uh, computed and compared to your budget uh, to which your taxpayers have agreed. And these are the really the key numbers. So just to give you a second to get to that, that page. This, um, this runs across two pages, but on the page 29, if in the third column, we look at that actual column, third number from the bottom, net change in fund balance. We're showing this year that Suffern is showing a positive change in fund balance, lack of a better word, a profit of $1,465,000. So you actually had a pretty good year for the general fund this year. Um, just in, in quick summary, the revenues actually were pretty much on target to the budget. You were slightly over about 300,000 over budget. And a lot of that is associated with the investment of your funds. You actually, uh, Michael made some changes to the investment funds and you actually generated about $200,000 more than you had budgeted there. You also had some small miscellaneous revenues, some um, prior year refunds and donations, one-time things that popped up the revenue a little bit, but you're pretty tight on the revenue. What is really good to see is on the expenditure side, your total expenditures were 13,562,000, actually at 1.3 million less than you had actually budgeted for. A lot of that is just overall payroll savings throughout all the various line items. You also have your health insurance was uh, under budget by about 287,000. And then there was uh, the related taxes on the redu reductions in the payroll, as well as some uh, savings of the transportation line. So that 1.3 million of expense savings, plus the revenue uh, being under, but over budget by 300,000, actually did, uh, that's, that's what helped generate this $1.4 million profit. When we add that to your accumulated fund balance, the second line from the bottom on page, that page 29 of almost 6 million, you currently have about 7.4 million of uh, total fund balances. And we're gonna talk about the detail of that in a minute. Um, just hold that thought if you had questions there. Quickly on the water fund, you actually showed a $220,000 profit again, third line from the bottom. This is on page 30 under the water fund, the actual $220,000 profit for the year, which is, um, which is good to see. Uh, you actually were under budget on the revenue. Uh, there was various um, reasons for actually collections being slightly less than what you had anticipated, but you also had some offsetting expenses that uh, again, uh, were not incurred and you didn't have to use a contingency of almost 200,000. So that you actually, even though your revenue was under budget, you still were able to show a $220,000 positive change. Almost identical to the sewer fund, you have about an $85,000 um, positive change in fund balance there as well. 
that helped reduce, you had a negative 267,000. So now your, reduction, your negative balance in the sewer fund is 182. And you know, I know you've got plans to continually keep making that better. Um, I think that summarizes most of the, the key things on the revenue side that we wanted to, to peek at. What I just wanted to take two minutes on, which is important for us to understand is on page 21. 21 is the balance sheet for the funds. And the only one I'm really gonna focus on right now is the uh, general fund, that first column. You had about nine and a half million dollars worth of assets uh, in, the, in the general fund. Your liabilities were about 2 million. And that nets you second line from the bottom, the total fund balance of that $7,400,000 that we just talked about uh, when we were looking at the income and expenses. However, what's important, although that number looks big, what's important for us to look at is you actually have a lot of this money accounted for either for some kind of advance or restricted by some kind of uh, purpose or some kind of uh, uh, needs that actually brings down an unassigned balance of actually $3,718,000. So that's a little bit healthier than you had last year. And I think that's, uh, that this, this is great for the village. You've actually had a couple of uh, very positive years here. Although 3.7 million looks like a big number, I think you really need to think um, twice about what's in there. You know, as a cash flow reserve, you generally want to, you know, keep a minimum of two to three months, and that's just about two and a half months. You also, um, next year, you're going to be adding, you, you added a resolution to add a capital um, uh, compensated absences reserve of about half a million dollars. So kind of built in there unofficially, you'll be doing that again next year. And if you were to look at these excess funds, remember that these things go, um, you need money set aside for emergencies if things happened and you need to pull out of your past reserves, you may need them. You also wanna consider things if you were to spend down any of that money, you might wanna think about paying down some debt. I think that's um, an you know, important thing to keep working on as well as saving money for your capital projects. You don't necessarily want to go out and bond those. Sometimes you wanna self fund them. And to do that, you need to build up some of these reserves. So although it looks like uh, kind of a big number, in reality, if you think about how you wanna spend this in the upcoming future, it's really not a lot of money. I think anybody have any questions on that? I think this is the key discussion for my presentation. That's uh, great. If anybody thinks of one, feel free to give me a call. Just a couple of, of, of notations here, things that I thought were, were good for the, for the village. On page 50, you have some short-term uh, bans, bond anticipation notes. You actually paid about $100,000 down on that. You started at about $1.3 million. You're down to $1.2 million. That's great news. Uh, also, what you did this year on page 51, is you actually took your long-term debt in the, in the middle paragraph here under the bond payable section is what I'm really looking at. The total bonds, you started at 8.2 million, you got it down to just under 7 million. You actually paid down about $1.3 million down on those bonds. So you're getting actually quite a much healthier um, liabilities on these. And if you remember, this was a good year because you did that refunding for those bonds, you were able to take some couple of old bonds that had some rates at like four and 2.75% and be able to convert them into a, a new bond at 1.46. So you actually did a, a bunch of really nice things this year and you had a very positive bottom line. Um, that's all I really wanted to present. If anybody had any other questions, I'm glad to answer them. Um, those are the key highlights. Thank you. I wanted to especially thank Treasurer Janito for doing such a fine job navigating the money situations here in Suffern and, and doing such a great job. Yes, and I also want to thank uh, Mike and his team. They really make the audit process very um, go very smoothly, and I'm hoping that it worked smoothly on his end as well. But um, but again, thank you to him and his team for for all they did with us. Thank you, Donna Lee. Thank you for, for, for um, taking the time and going through the audit. Um, and thank you, Mr. Janito. Great job. Thank you.
Thank you both. It's truly really appreciated. You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, next up is um, Chief Coffa from the Suffering Volunteer Fire Department. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, just one item on the agenda for this evening, and that is to accept the membership of Edison Chikaiza, an over 18 member of the Volunteer Host Company. So do I have a motion to accept Edison Chikaiza as an over 18 member, Volunteer Host Company? Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, do I have a second? Second, <clears throat> second Trustee Alpert. Trustee Alpert, um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank right, you, thank Jeremy. You. Thank you. Good evening. Have a great evening. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank the guys for the for the uh, most recent fires and the great uh, response on uh, Thanksgiving Day and a day after. Or, no, a few days after on the yeah, other last fire. Tuesday. I will. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much. That, thank also, you. That was wonderful uh, community involvement as well with the parade. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Everyone agreed. Liked it. We, thank we you. definitely had a good time. Thank you. Yeah. You wish it would have been a little warmer for you guys. <laughs> I was warm. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We were not. <laughs> All but right. I think it, that it was, following it was, that I, thread, Jeremy, following the thread that you guys did was really really great because we got so excited when we thought oh my gosh they're right around the corner it was it was really it was yeah, ryan well did a great job with that he did, yeah he, he, really did. Did. he did he did yeah. and he was calling people out and just you know mm -hmm. like hey we're coming fred you know like <laughs> it just it was really great good and everybody enjoyed it yeah in this environment it felt like it was something special for sure terrific we, we needed that with everything that's going on i agree i agree great. So, thank you. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. you. Okay. Next up, uh, culture and recreation, Miss Kathy Mills. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Village Board. Hello. Hello. So, a few things that we have coming up we have um, our exercise classes, we are maintaining them Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m., the chair exercise. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have chair yoga at 10. And then on Fridays, Zoom chair yoga is on Fridays at 10 a.m. Uh, we had the, a few events this weekend, which we were thrilled with. Um, Friday night, the village was lit up for the holidays over at Avon Park. So for those um, residents that haven't been downtown, please try to drive around. The village looks festive, it looks happy. Uh, we're working on some of the stores are putting music outside during the day and the evenings just to have some festivities uh, going on down the village. Uh, so that was on Friday night. Uh, again, Jeremy and um, Andrew, fantastic job Friday, uh, Sunday with the drive around the police and the fire department. You guys did a great job. It was it was a joy to, to wait for the trucks to come around to the neighborhood. So great job on that. Um, and then yesterday, Sunday was Pearl Harbor ceremony in Suffern Village Hall. It was a fantastic afternoon. Joe, uh, Steve, Mayor, it was just a fantastic day to see all of you. Um, it was phenomenal. Mr. Galella, who is a Pearl Harbor survivor, is 99 years old. He will be 100 in a couple of weeks. And he is uh, so thrilled every year when Suffern asks him to attend our ceremonies. So we were all just in awe of him as we always are, and we're happy to put um, the ceremony together. So I was just uh, thrilled yesterday with the ceremony and um, Mr. Galella was thrilled as well. So from his family to all of us and to all on the board, he just thanked us so much for that. So thank you. Uh, we have a couple of things coming up that we're working on with the schools. Uh, there is a coloring contest that's out on the backpack right now and kids are invited to color some pay a color a coloring page send it back to us in recreation and then we're going to finish that up in a couple of weeks so send in your uh your drawings we've been getting a lot of great drawings so far so thank you to the residents that are doing that uh we have an ugly sweater contest coming up i know some of us have nice sweaters some of us have ugly sweaters but december 18th is actually ugly sweater day 
So we're going to have an ugly sweater contest. We have the flyer out on the backpacks uh, as of tomorrow. And it's for just a fun thing for the holidays, people to get in the spirit and to uh, come together as a community, just do something fun. So look for that in the backpacks and it's going up on the website tomorrow. Uh, we are working with the Chamber of Commerce on decorations for the village. And they, again, we lit up the lights uh, at the Avon Park and the other parks. The chamber is doing a phenomenal job of getting in touch with all their shops, all of their groups, and they're decorating the village as well. So as a combined effort with village departments and the chamber, the village is looking great this, this holiday season. Uh, we, are ha we have letters to Santa. So there is a mailbox over in the gazebo area. So anyone that would like to write a letter to Santa, he will in some fashion give back to children who write a letter to Santa. So please stop by. We are taking um, them very seriously and making sure they get to the right people so that Santa gets a response back to the kids. So participate in that, it's fun. Um, and then we have this Saturday, uh, Connor School is going to be using the parking lot of Leo Leiden to do a coat drive. So anyone that has extra coats, extra clothing, please participate. As we all know with all the food drives and the toy drives and the clothing drives that have been on, people are needing a lot more this, this holiday season. So uh, if you have any extra clothing or extra coats, Connor's school will be using the Leo Leiden parking lot. They're not going in the building. Again, they're just having people pull up. They're getting the bags and they're putting it into a truck. So you know, we're, we're glad that we can let them use the, uh, the outdoor part of the facility for that clothing drive. And that is it for now. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. You guys did a great job, DPW. Everybody's just been through this holiday season of odd has just been really great. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. All to everybody together. It's been a it's been a fantastic season working together with all the different departments. So kudos to everyone that has participated in all these things. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you to the street department and DPW for a fine job of, of lighting up the village, um, working closely with recreation. Thank you. And then, uh, of course, the Chamber of Commerce and Good Samaritan Hospital also yes. was um, helping us out. So it's bringing that festive moment, that, that holiday season and cheer to the village of suffering. So thank you for all that were involved. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Village Board. And the Pearl Harbor event was out, was outstanding. Very good job, Kathy. Thank you. And to, to Nancy and Elaine, myself, DBW, it really was. It was just yep. phenomenal. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Mr. Bruce Simon of, will be providing a community foundation update. Mr. Simon. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Board. Congratulations, Mr. Soberman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just happened to notice on the calendar, it was 11 years ago today that I was sworn in. So keep that seat warm. Okay. It's a good one to have. Uh, speaking tonight on behalf of the Village of Suffern Community Foundation, those of you that don't know, the village has its own 501c3 nonprofit. It is not part of the village. We are a separate operation. Our goal is to help people throughout the village. In November, we worked with Sacred Heart Church on their food drive. We fed 75 families. And while that sounds great, and I'm thrilled that all the people came out and helped us, the problem is that the issue of hunger is still exists in our community. They are having a Christmas basket food collection, a drive-through in the Sacred Heart parking lot this Saturday, December 13th, sorry, Sunday, December 13th from 2 to 5 p.m in the parking lot at Sacred Heart. Turkeys, hams, potatoes, canned vegetables, gravy, dried milk, canned soups, pasta and sauce, tuna, peanut butter, jelly, boxed cereals, dessert foods, and supermarket gift cards. The problem of hunger in our community is still serious and still great, and any help is greatly appreciated. Again, we're collecting on Sunday, December 13th. We're distributing on Saturday, December 19th from 10A to noon. So any help you can offer would be great. Now on to the future. Future is in 2021, as Deputy Mayor Barone teased last month. Yes, I'm looking at you, Charlie. The, the Community Foundation is launching a virtual marathon. What that means is people are going to be asked to travel the distance 
at their own pace on their own location. They don't have to do it in one day or one week. The goal here is 26 miles, which is what a marathon is in 26 weeks. So from January 1 to July 1, that's exactly 26 weeks. If you average one mile a week, you make the 26 miles. This is our big push for next year. We will be selling shirts in to, to go along with this about the Suffern Marathon. It's the first annual. The money we raise will go towards children's programming in 2021. Child, kids have had a really okay. rough year. Not that anybody else has it. But we are looking at things like music programs, art programs, photography, self-defense, pottery, you name it. If it involves and helps children, we are looking at it. Physical fitness programs. I know uh, Trustee Corrigan, Trustee Barone were on board for this, and I appreciate that. The rest of the foundation is on board for it. We will be announcing more details about the marathon later this week. Look for the website suffernmarathon.com. And I'm hoping that the village will link to it from the village website. It'll be on all your favorite social media as well. The goal here is to raise as much money as we can to put on as many programs as we can to help young children, even teenagers, help families do things that they normally wouldn't do. If there are any questions, email suffernmarathon at gmail.com and we will get right back to you. Does the board have any questions for me? No questions, just a wow, outrageous and awesome. You're very it's gonna be so much fun. And I think again, bringing the community together, right? That it's just, cool. I can't wait, I can't wait to join. <laughs> There's a space waiting for you, Ms. Corrigan. Yes, and <laughs> Fraser will also be a participant. <laughs> we'll have to get a four-legged shirt for him. <laughs> He's uh, okay just, with two. <laughs> I wanna go back to something. I just wanna make sure everybody understands. When I say marathon, this is a virtual event, meaning you do it in your location at your pace. Yeah. So we're not expecting anyone to run 26 miles. I don't think I could drive 26 miles without needing hospitalization some days. So I'm with you. It's up to the people to do at their own own pace. The, the ultimate goal is get people moving, get more physical yeah. fitness, get more exercise. Every one of us, if you spoke to your doctor, they would say more steps are better than less steps. Yep. If you go to the supermarket, if you walk up and down every aisle in the supermarket, that's about a mile. Okay. So if you think this is something that's physically beyond you, I promise you, one mile a week is an easy thing to do. Um, like I said, more details will be later this week at suffernmarathon.com. More information, suffernmarathon at gmail.com. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. I was muted. Okay. Next up is Chief Lachlan from the Suffern Police Department. Chief? Evening, everyone. Uh, for the month of uh, the, I'm sorry, the month of November, the police department responded to 651 calls for service. The call types varied from routine in nature to emergency calls. We made several arrests, charging multiple individuals with menacing, criminal possession of a weapon, harassment, aggravated harassment, criminal possession of a controlled substance, unlawful possession of marijuana, breach of peace, aggravated unlicensed operation of motor vehicle in second and third degrees larceny, criminal possession of stolen property, aggravated assault, and criminal contempt. Uh, we also conducted several warrant investigations, which resulted in the execution of multiple warrants and the arrest of several individuals. On the community policing side of things, um, as you all know, our toy drive is in, in full swing. Um, we have um, held several events so far, one at Walmart. We held a contactless drop-off for seniors at the senior center and uh, like Kathy and Jeremy spoke about, we participated in the um, the Santa parade that the fire department put on, and we got an actually a great response from the residents. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with our our uh, our police trailer, but we we filled the entire trailer with gifts. So, and that's due to the generosity of the of the residents. Um, having said that, we anticipate this year's um, list of recipients to be larger than in the past. 
due to COVID and, and the kind of year everyone's having. So um, we just asked if anybody's able to, that they drop off any new unwrapped toys at the police department. We're also setting up an Amazon wish list so residents can send in um, unwrapped toys, new toys, um, if they're not comfortable stopping into the police department. Um, that's all I have for the update. Any questions? Thank you. Thank the you. The toy drive is so important for all of us. Mayor I, see, Mayor, I see you talking, but you're muted if you're trying to talk. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying thank you to the police department and for the toy drive and the participation. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you, membership. And the next on the, uh, I have the resolution before me authorizing the nomination of Julio Varez to the position of police officer full-time. Resolve the Board of Trustees hereby nominates Julio, Julio Varez to the position of police officer full-time pending final certification and qualifications by the Rockland County personnel. Do I have a motion? Motion, motion. Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, do I have a second? Second, second. Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, any further on a discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next resolution authorizing the nomination nominating of Kita Barber to the position of dispatcher part-time. Board of Trustees hereby nominates Peter Barber to the position of dispatcher part-time pending final certification and qualifications by Rockland County personnel. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Alpert. Trustee Alpert, do I have a second? Second. Second, Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Next resolution authorizing an increase in police officer part-time starting salary. Board of Trustees authorizes an increase in police officer part-time salary starting starting salary to $32 per hour. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, any further discussion? I would like to ask you, what was the previous per hour amount? I think it was 18. No, it was approximately, it was approximately $24 an hour. That's a big jump from 24 to 32 per hour. Um, if I could explain that when we went to hire part-time police officers, we would get no takers because the county average is 32. I understand. All All right. Right. How long, how long, uh, uh, Chief Laughlin, how long was it 24? Uh, in other words, how long was it steady at that old number? Just curious. I don't know exactly, but I can tell you that, and I, I have not seen them get a raise in quite uh, many years. Um, also, in the past, they had gotten the same percentage raises as the full-time police officers. So if you can imagine if the board, um, if the the PBA membership um, got a 2% raise in their contract, 2% of $24 an hour doesn't amount to much of a raise. So they fell quite a bit behind. Yeah. Thank you. Any further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, Chief, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a safe night. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Michael Janito, Village Treasurer. Uh, yes, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we have before you a resolution to amend the budget for garbage truck repairs. He brought this up at the workshop. Essentially, we have uh, two garbage trucks that are in need of emergency repairs. And the board did, um, by an email exchange between myself and the board yourself, um, approve it. So this resolution is essentially going to move $23,000, $15,000 from the SALT budget, which I've been advised by the DPW supervisor that we are, we have plenty of SALT for the winter, and uh, 15000 from that budget and another 8000 from the street department budget into the solid waste budget for the repair of the garbage trucks. Okay, so I have the resolution amending the 2020-2021 budget for garbage truck repairs. 
Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Alpert. Trustee Alpert, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Salverman. Trustee Salverman, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the other item on the agenda is a resolution um, to accept a donation from the uh, Beth Haverham Sheer Shalom in the amount of $2,350. We are, um, that, that is for our first responders. So we would take those funds if accepted by the board and uh, amend the budget to allow the fire department to use half of those funds and the police department to use the other half of those funds. And so there's two things here. One is to accept the donation. And the second thing is to amend the budget to allow the two departments to utilize the funds as intended this year. Okay, so I have the resolution before me accepting the donation from Beth Havram Shrum Shalom of Mawa for use by the police department and the fire department. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Alpert. Trustee Alpert, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Salverman. Trustee Salverman, any further on the discussion? Yes, I did want to mention that Jonathan Theodore uh, is here as a representative from Beth Havirim Sher Shalom, if, if, if he'd like to say a few words perhaps on this. Sure. He's, I, I, I see him, I can ask to unmute, I don't know. Uh, Mike, you may have to unmute him. Oh, okay, I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. Okay. Okay, let me uh, show my beautiful face as well. First, okay. we want to thank you. We want to thank you very much, Jonathan, on behalf of Beth Haverim. Okay, uh, definitely. Um, I just uh, wanted to just briefly say that uh, November first, our synagogue Beth Haverim Shir Shalom, who, as you know, is very aligned with the village of Suffern, uh, we're involved in the Suffern Toy Drive as well as uh, the soup kitchen and various events that happen around the village. Uh, because a large percentage of our membership lives uh, right here in the village. Uh, so on uh, November 1st, we had an event in, uh, in lieu of the New York City Marathon. Uh, we, had, we created our own one-third mile loop around the uh, property. Um, to, uh, and 56 people were either walking or running around through the one-third mile loop and over 180 sponsors uh, for these individuals based on laps completed. On a very cool, very rainy day, we raised $9,400 to be shared evenly across Valley Hospital, Good Sam, and first responders from Mawa and Suffern. And I'm very happy for us to make the contribution of $2,350 to the village of Suffern. And I have the check right here in my possession, and I'll be dropping it by probably tomorrow morning or one morning early uh, later this week to uh, to Mr. Janito and. Uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, participate and uh, and uh, contri contribute on behalf of my synagogue and my community. Well, thank thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Theodore, and please thank your your community and and your synagogue for that generous donation. Absolutely, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. And all. thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you once again. Mayor, uh, we also have one other resolution, which uh, I sent to you this afternoon. I'm sorry for the late um, sending of that. But in any event, uh, for many years, we had utilized industrial UI services as consultants and uh, to represent us in unemployment claims. And with the passing of our former village clerk, uh, Virginia Menchner, uh, for whatever reason, the paperwork was lost in transit, so to speak. and uh, the contract that had not been renewed. And basically this is asking to renew that contract effective January 1, 2021. Uh, and the amount is $2,000 a year. So it's, it's well worth it because what they do is they look at all the laws, rules and regulations involving unemployment, the eligibility of people that are applying for unemployment where we would have to pay for that and uh, where appropriate they challenge it. and. If, if it is appropriate, then they advise us as to that it is indeed appropriate. So it's, the ser services are well worth it. We, use, as again, utilize them for many years and they save us a lot of money over the years. Okay, I have that resolution in front of me, appointment of industrial UI services as unemployment representatives. Do I have a motion? Trustee Salberman. Trustee Salberman, do I have a second? 
Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, any further discussion? Yeah, I was just kind of curious. So is this an item that's identified in our budget and uh, just wasn't being funded or, I mean, paid for, or I'm just a little confused about yeah, Yes, no, we, we have a budget for unemployment insurance and we're self-insured for unemployment as a municipality. So the money that comes out of our unemployment line is the money to actually pay for claimants as well as to pay for the professional services that okay. uh, such as industrial UI services. I just wanted to make sure it was, it was budgeted. That's all. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, for one, would not put anything before you that I wasn't didn't think budgeted. so. I just wanted to make sure because it wasn't mentioned. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, and one other, one last item that we have. Well, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't vote. We didn't I'm officially sorry. vote. We, we had okay. a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Uh, the other thing, Mary, that I just want to bring to everybody's attention is an update in the fact that uh, in November, we went out uh, for our annual bond anticipation note. Every year we, we go out with a certain amount of a note. We pay down, as was mentioned by Donna Lee Berard, a certain amount. And then we also sometimes add additional funds. In any event, uh, last year when we went out with a bond anticipation note, the rate that we received for a year was 2%. Uh, this November 19th, we went out with a note. Our rate is 0.55% for the wow. year. So we're doing very well there. And part of that, by the way, is related to how they view our credit and looking at our results. And so um, it's all coming around to us being on a very good side of the ledger, so to speak. And uh, I gotta say, it's, it's not just uh, everybody's work and finance and so forth, it's everybody's work, this board yourself and the board who have um, giving the leadership and uh, you know the presentation to everybody that it's so important to keep our finances in shape, right down to every single department head and employee, I have to say, by and far, they are uh, very cognizant of how they spend our funds and how important it is uh, to keep those public funds safe. So I got have to have to thank everybody for their assistance. Mike, if we are a well-tuned orchestra who's running the finances in the village in a great way. You're the conductor. Thank you. Okay. I, I hope we don't have any sour notes along the way. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Mike, thank you, Will. That's it, quick, Mayor, for us. I have a question, Mike. Sure. This is um, a bond that we are going to float? Uh, no, it's actually called a bond anticipation note. Uh, typically, what you do is you authorize bond resolutions to borrow money long term. But before borrowing the money long term, you typically borrow money on a short term basis, one year at a time. And there's actually a benefit to that. A, a bond typically you're going to get for, let's say, 20, 15 or 20 years. You're going to pay a higher rate of interest for that over the 15 or 20 years. Whereas a note being such a short term, you get a very about half the rate you would get on a bond or even less. Um, so, yeah, this, this is a note. And what's going to happen is next year, actually. One of the items in this note is the fire truck. Um, that's a big number. It's eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. So we will probably take the fire truck along with a couple of other major items and bond those um, over fifteen or twenty years. So this is the one-year note, right? Yes. How much is the amount of the uh, note? I have to look it up. It was just over two million dollars. I just wish we could have gotten that for you know ten years or fifteen years, but. It's only a one-year deal, huh? It's only a one-year deal. And actually, the long-term rates are very good, and they're expected to stay good for quite a while. Um, you may have followed the Federal Reserve. And last year, they said that the rates were going to remain close to zero, if not zero, for at least through the year 2021 and possibly into 2022. And now, seeing how the COVID epidemic is impacting everybody, there isn't any um, desire on the part of the Federal Reserve to raise those rates. Yeah. Thanks. So it's it's actually not good for us who are saving, but it's great for us to have who have to borrow money. Borrow. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Mike. Thank you for your good work, Mike. Oh, you're quite welcome, everyone. Okay. Next, I'd like to open up the meeting to public participation. Mr. Janito, if you can recognize the raised hands. Mayor, so if you um, wish to speak, just raise your hand and uh, 
I'm going to unmute you. Uh, this is, I believe, Catherine, but Catherine, you're unmuted if you'd identify yourself. Hi, it's Catherine from eight from seven Sussex Court Suffer in New York. I just, Michael, I, I just wanted to hear your take since the last time we spoke about the COVID impact of the village of Suffern and I know you've been participating and the board's been participating in other meetings. I just wanted to know where we are right now. Um, yes, yes, sure. Uh, the short of it is that the, um, the major concern that we have regarding COVID is not so much the expenditure side, but the revenue side. And uh, of that revenue, as you probably are aware, we have um, some major revenues in terms of things like mortgage tax and sales tax. The, the unfortunate thing is that the sales tax comes to us uh, quite a few months after the close of the quarter. For instance, the sales tax that we received in August was for the quarter that ended in May. So we are now going to be receiving very shortly our sales tax for the next quarter that ended. And uh, that'll give us a better idea of where we stand. To give you a little bit of a, an insight into what has happened is we know that the last quarter, the one that ended May of 2020, was down 27% from the previous year, sim same quarter. And that was significant, but Fortunately for us, we were very conservative in budgeting for sales tax, and our budget came in pretty much on target for that, even though we technically lost more money la this year than last year. The first quarter of this year, we were down about 12.5%. Uh, that's the one that, uh, that we're being told by the county. So we're having things there. Mortgage tax is another uh, large number for us. The problem with mortgage tax, that's only reported every six months. And according to the county, they don't have a clue as to which way it's going until the six month period ends, which is probably going to be very soon for, for this fiscal year. Uh, so those are the unknowns and mortgage tax could go either way. You know, the interest rates are very low and it could be that people are financing or refinancing homes because of a great opportunity. And then you have the opposite side where people don't have the money to pay their mortgage and maybe selling out their properties and um, you know, abandoning their properties or their mortgage payments. In any event, uh, it still remains to be seen where that's going. In terms of others, you know that things like when the pool was closed, we didn't bring in the revenue for the pool, but then again, that was a net cost item. So in essence, our budget would look more favorable on that. Uh, this is going to be November 30th, is our six month ending of our uh, fiscal year, six months ended. And we are now going through anything that came through since then, including our bank statements and so forth. And once we have those finalized, we will have a very good picture. And while we intended to get something ready for the board on the first quarter, there were so many other dynamics changing. It, it was better just to wait until this end of six months. So in the month of December, we'll have, a, in a layman's terms, a report summarized for the board where we are in both the revenue side and expenditure side of things. Thank you, Michael. That's helpful. You're welcome. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, Mayor, I'm looking to see if there's any, I don't see any other hands at the moment. If you, oh, here we go. We have, uh, Michael, Michael, if you would, Identify yourself, please. Uh, my name is Michael Curley. And uh, can you hear me, Mike? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, we all know that being a mayor or trustee is, uh, is a public service. We also know that being a mayor is a tough task with many responsibilities. And, and that being said, I think to, we need to, as a village, consider making the mayor's salary higher to reflect the job and responsibility that the job entails. Villages as a whole are getting more complex, especially with zoning and planning. I think we need to consider this to make sure the mayor has a time and dedication to keep our village strong. I say this with no malice to anyone, only a desire to keep our village ahead of our ever-changing times, including with sewer plants, contracts, and all the et cetera, et cetera, responsibly as it goes along with it, okay? The mayor's job is a full-time job, a job and a half, actually. And it needs to be compensated for, for this for the, for the future. 
if someone chooses not to accept the salary, they can always assume not to accept the extra salary. But I think in these times, there's, there's so much to do there and so much work. It, it, it's not a eight hour a week, a 10 hour a week. Even the trustees, they have, uh, you know, uh, more responsibilities. And maybe that could be looked at at some point also. Right? I know a few years back, people lowered their salaries. And, and but I got up there and, you know, this is the whatever. I mean, they didn't give us back their whole salary, but they gave some of it back. But I think it needs a substantial increase to reflect the times and the responsibility that goes along with the job. And I think it'll I think it'll 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 it, it, it they, they need to do a lot more reading, a lot more work. And, and I'm telling you, especially with the zoning and planning, and not that I'm insulting any, any boards that are there, but the communication has to stay strongly open and with everything, with the, again, with the sewer plants, with contracts, wh whatever it may be. And it's just a suggestion to, to start the, maybe start a conversation on it. And if it's, if it's a no-go, it's a no-go but at least start a conversation, understand. Maybe we look around to see what other communities are, are doing or what they give and, and what their responsibilities and what they entail. Thank you for your time. And uh, just, uh, just I wanted to want to Mr. Soberman, I wanted to welcome you to, to the board and just make sure, I hope to see you at the opening of the uh, Suffern uh, Village Pool in 2021. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank I you. like the swim. <laughs> very good, sir. Okay. Okay, Mayor, we also have uh, Joseph Hunt, uh, you know, the president of our local CSEA. Okay. Go ahead, Mayor, Joe. Mayor and board. Um, Mayor, I'd like to thank you and Mike Janino to stabilize in this village in the last couple of years. CSEA has always worked well with leadership. I want to welcome Fred to the new Suffern team. And welcome back, Steve. And can't forget Joe and Chuck. Thanks for staying on and being a part of this team suffering. Again, moving forward, we're willing to work with you in any way we need to, to stabilize and keep suffering great. Remember, you say this the best, Mayor, all roads lead to suffering. And if we can't get them here, then, you know, it's my fault because they got too many potholes. <laughs> they do. You know, they do. For, uh, doing what you do. <laughs> And again, I think you all deserve raises. I don't know how Michael is going to help lead this up and make this happen. But um, if I can do anything to make it work for you all, I will be here and support. Again. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Thank you. All, all the projects that you support, Mayor, throughout the village with recreation is awesome. They're doing an awesome job. And again, I can't thank the board and yourself, and especially Michael because he fixed my computer today for me. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, membership, for all they do also, Joe. Thank you. You got it. Okay. Mr. Janito, is there anyone else? And not at the moment, but I'll remind the audience on the app, you have a little icon that says raise hand. Uh, if you're on your phone, uh, I'm sorry, on the uh, computer, the same thing. If you're on a telephone, you can just hit star nine and that will show us a raised hand. So Mayor, at the moment, I don't see anybody if you want to give it another few seconds. Okay, let's, um, let's move on and close the public participation. Next up is Mr. Charles Lewicki, Department of Public Works. Is Mr. Zewicki with us? Mr. Zewicki, Charles, you've been asked to unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. I have a couple of items I want to update the board from uh, the workshop. A, um, Regarding the uh, wastewater treatment plant, a monthly wastewater treatment plant report will be distributed to the mayor and the board uh, a week before each monthly workshop meeting. And this will um, provide all the information that uh, is currently available at that time. Um, a list of current outstanding maintenance items, uh, establishing um, item priority, 
uh, projected schedule and associated costs is uh, currently being compiled. Um, weekly meetings will be held to discuss the progress of all outstanding maintenance items. <laughs> Any questions regarding that? Um, Charles, can you um, possibly um, let us know what happens on those weekly meetings, whether maybe- Yes, yeah, 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 yeah we're gonna be- uh, yeah, we're going to be, uh, we have minutes and we'll be able to distribute those minutes, sure. Okay. And, you know, as well, um, you know, if the board has time, maybe they can be a, you know, a silent partner and just listen in on those meetings whenever it's available for one of them. Sure. Once we set the meeting, we'll just, we'll, we'll make that known to the board and, and maybe a board member or two can attend. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we had this big discussion, Charles and I, and the operators. So uh, we, as Charles was detailing the plan, that's what we're going to going to put into motion. Excellent, because I'd like to get to as many meetings as I possibly can. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, the other item is the uh, the tree assessment. I did receive Sandy's email this afternoon. Uh, prior to that, I spoke with Jason. Suckridge uh, of Bartlett Tree Experts. He's the um, the gentleman along with Bartlett who put together the um, uh, tree risk uh, assessment uh, that we did um, in 2019. Um, so we had some discussion about the um, concerns of um, you know the unbalanced crowns. So he had uh, indicated uh, to me that the unbalanced crowns that might have been a risk to the trees that were serviced last season, potentially contributing to branch stem or root failure would have been identified in the risk assessment report because of the potential risk liability to the village. Uh, these conditions then were addressed in the risk mitigation pruning, crown pruning, to improve canopy shape, particularly on the uh, side growing towards residential homes is achieved by a common method known as crown spread reduction. There is no risk associated with this condition. It is strictly aesthetics. So, um, you yeah, know, moving forward, I know that um, we had some recommendations from the tree committee on this particular item. If the board would like to Again, address the um, the um, um, crown spread reduction um, to address uh, any particular aesthetics. You know, we certainly could uh, proceed with that. The other item is I do agree with um, the second item to proceed with an RFP for a risk tree risk assessment and mitigation report. This would be similar to the one that was done in 2019 uh, for trees identified by the tree committee. Okay, uh, is so there any the, questions regarding that? No, so the committee will be presenting that? Well, I, I, uh, what we've done uh, for the report when we uh, uh, proceeded with the 2019 report, uh, we did receive um, recommendations from the tree committee on what areas to uh, include into that uh, uh, that uh, assessment. And um, I, I think it would be, you know, it makes sense to do the same thing here. We have the committee could identify the areas that they want to proceed with. And um, we could, you know, eventually, if, if the board um, is in agreement, eventually we could identify additional areas in subsequent years to uh, continue this similar type program over the next few years. So you think it would be uh, advisable just to move forward now with the crown spread reduction and, and, and have that issue um, taken care of? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it, again, it's, um, I think the priority here was um, the liability to the village, but certainly if the board would like to be able to proceed with uh, with that, it is as um, as Jason had described. It's essentially a aesthetic issue. And again, if the board would like to proceed with that, I, I certainly will. 
So it's just an aesthetic issue, not a liability. Right. But yeah, but I mean, there's, there's two parts to that. Yeah, there's the there's the um, the work that has been complete or was completed last year. And that's what um, I think uh, Sandy had expressed a concern with in terms of the uh, the unbalanced trees. Right. So right. Um, that would be one item that we can address again by uh, um you know, um, addressing the canopy spread reduction, as as, as uh, Jason had indicated, we can do that. And then a second item would be moving forward, uh, identifying a new area of the village that a um, a complete tree risk assessment and mitigation report could be uh, completed. And that's that's why I think would really, I mean, again, that that would protect the village from any potential liabilities. And I think that. It proved to be uh, worthwhile in the 20 and when we did it in 2019, and I think it would, I, I would recommend doing it again here in 2021, 2021 essentially. So I would agree with that with the the new tree assessment report and the uh, the balancing of the trees. Okay, that's what I would agree with. I don't know how to board. We're going to put put out RFPs for both. Well, the one, yeah, the um, the tree risk assessment and mitigation would be a, a full blown RFP. Uh, the other one I'd have to look at it. The um, salt was supplied. To other it, 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 I'm sorry. The um, the admission that um, the uh, tree uh, spread reduction. I'd have to look at and see what is involved there. It might be just a matter of uh, soliciting some uh, some quotes from some arborists. So it, if, okay. if need be, I certainly would put the RFP together, but it would be uh, certainly on a, a, a smaller scale. And that all falls under the tree budget line. Right, and we do have about um, 20. 21,000. 20, yeah, it's just under 22,000, 21,959, I believe it is. Okay. Okay, so th would th we would like to move forward with that uh, plan of action? I think it's a good idea. Right. I believe, I just want to mention, I, I believe Sandy Stead is on this call. I don't know if she wants to chime in at all about this as the uh, chair of the tree committee. I'm not sure if she's got anything prepared, but I did see that she's on the call. If, if uh, Mr. Janine well, wants to ask. Charles, uh, do, do we need to um, have any further with um, Ms. Stead? I, I I don't believe so unless uh, unless she she wants to add something. Uh, I think we got it covered. Okay. I, I yeah. All right. I think I we'll just move forward that. in that in that direction and see. You know, we'll we'll look at the um, see and creating an RFP and get some quotes and move forward from here. Yes, we'll do. Thank you. Okay. So moving on to. Um, the um, other uh, items uh, requesting authorization to solicit bids for the wastewater tree and plant upgrade and modification project contract one with the due date of January 21st, 2021 at 3 p.m. So I have that resolution in front of me authorizing superintendent of public works to solicit bids for the wastewater treatment plant upgrades and modifications project contract number one. Do I have a motion? Motion, oh. Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh. Motion passes. All right, thank you. Um, everyone uh, remaining item came in kind of late. I, uh, I'm not sure if it did make the agenda. Uh, be requesting authorization to uh, hire Mr. Travis Jennings to the vacant street and refuse department labor position at an hourly rate of $18.39, effective December 9th, 2020. Uh, the resolution appointing Travis Jennings as a laborer, effective December 9th, 2020. Do I have a motion? Motion, Elliman, so moves. Trustee Soberman, do we have a second? 
Second, Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay, next up is the attorney, Mr. Magrino. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, and uh, welcome, Mr. Salverman. I uh, will be calling you shortly to introduce myself, but welcome to the board. Thank you very much. And thank you for your past service. Thank oh, you. No, you mixed up that one. I'm sorry, that was Michael Janito. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I was here before too, but uh, it's jumping in to um, the first item is the uh, chapter 254, the vehicle and traffic um, uh, law came up uh, in terms of parking came up last time. I recall it was either January or February. We were working on a number of changes to section 254 regarding parking. And obviously uh, March came and, uh, and things changed. So the way we had left it was to have, I think we need a meeting, um, you know, perhaps certainly with Amy and the chief. Um, and I, I know trustee Corrigan is interested in this. Uh, frankly, I prefer an in-person meeting, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. We can do a zoom meeting just to go over all of it to make sure everybody understands where we're going. Uh, I didn't want to set a public hearing for it uh, yet until we had a chance to meet. So that's why, I just wanted to bring it up now because I know an issue came up about changing parking spots. I believe Mr. Barone came up with that before. So um, uh, I just wanted to bring that up if anybody had any questions, but that is the game plan is to try to meet either this month or next um, so that we can, it will be prepared or will be ready for a, uh, a public hearing. All right, I think that's a great idea to review it in its totality 254 and then we'll be fully prepared if that's okay with the board. Yes, and I would like to do it after the holidays, if that's okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And in that, we would visit putting a couple of uh, more 15-minute spots in? Right. That's right. Correct. I'm good. Sounds like a plan. Uh, okay, the next item... Um, Back on September 7th, uh, the governor uh, signed into law. Um, it's a mandate that local municipalities have to come up with detailed plans regarding future health disaster emergencies involving a communicable disease. Uh, quite similar to uh, the action <laughs> uh, village was required to take uh, in March and April of this year. And frankly, the village, uh, with the help of Amy, I know uh, Mr. Glickle and uh, several others uh, came up with a, um, a plan uh, to um, for the employees and, and basically a policy uh, which was required to be developed basically on the fly and, and under difficult circumstances, but it was done and, and it came out very well. Um, the plan that this calls for, the governor is calling for, um, there are some time constraints on it. Um, it needs to be developed. I believe what the village should do really is have a a team of, of planners, uh, we'll start with the mayor, uh, again, perhaps uh, Amy, um, the chief, uh, a few others we can talk about um, to develop the plan. Um, the good news is you don't have to start from scratch, not only because we have one already, but because uh, there's a template that um, they provided. So uh, it would involve asking all department heads for their input. It would involve also asking the union for their input. And I mentioned the timeline. Um, this plan needs to be to the union by no later than February 4th. So, um, you know, that's, that's gonna come up very quickly. So uh, we'll need to get working on that. I just wanted to put that out there that that's something that needs to be done after the union has a chance to chime in. And again, it has to do with many of the items that addressed already, um, staggered shifts, uh, you know, people coming uh, half on, half off, that type of thing. Um, so uh, those are all things that uh, will be addressed. The union will be able to have their input and then uh, a plan will need to be uh, adopted by the board and we present that to the board uh, probably in March. Finally, um, if you'll recall, I forget the last time we it, this was addressed, but the outdoor dining uh, that was authorized uh, originally back in, I believe it was June, um, uh, was, uh, expired. 
uh, in terms of the, the village's authorization. Um, there's a resolution to allow that to continue uh, for those who can uh, have the outdoor dining in parking lots or, or other areas that they have as part of their um, restaurants, not, not the sidewalk dining. And my understanding is, Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong, that there really has not been a request to continue that for the no, sidewalk. Not on the, uh, not on the sidewalk dining. Right. That is correct. Right. So this would just authorize it to April 5th, 2021. It's still uh, authorized or permitted um, <clears throat> by the governor's executive orders. Uh, you know, look, we've all been through this. Uh, everything is subject to change, but this would allow it subject to the governor permitting it as, as it currently is permitted. So this, the, that resolution has been provided and it basically is similar to what was previously passed. It just authorizes it through April 5th. And um, hopefully by then we'll be in a, a different position to you know, authorize either to continue or, or uh, however the circumstances are at the time, we'll, we'll okay. deal with it. And that resol this resolution is with the accepting the exemption to sidewalk. Is that correct? This is just for the, this is just for the, um, a permit for temporary outdoor dining for on on their own premises. Right. Just want to make that clear. The board, you you have the resolution, board members. But but if we wanted to, if we get an early and we get a nice spring and things aren't so wonderful, we can always come back and revisit sidewalk dining. Correct. Yes. Uh, right. I just I know I just want to make sure. <laughs> Absolutely. We don't want to lock anybody out that's not, you know, that has the ability to, to, yeah. you know, have the tent structure outside, have that their own on their own property. Oh, of course. I want to give every opportunity that we possibly can give to anybody, you yeah. know. Okay, so I have the resolution authorizing modifications to the village of Suffern Table and Chair program to assist local restaurants reopen in accordance with New York State Executive Order orders issued by the governor of the state of New York. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Trustee Alfred, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. I just wanted to go back to that local government mandate to prepare for the detailed plans regarding future health, future health disasters. We have a detailed plan that we will be using to guide us through the template, thanks to the village clerk, Amy Paffenroth, and all of the department heads and the, and the personnel and the union already involved when we developed our reopening plan, which will be very instrumental in submitting this new plan. I think we covered the majority of the issues in the template. So um, big shout out to everyone involved in that reopening plan. What a great job, thank you. Okay. That's it. Okay, trustees update. Does anyone like to have anything? I'm good. Okay. I'm my stuff tonight. All righty. Trust, Trustee Corrigan, didn't you have a, a, a resolution you wanted? No, the mayor's going to manage that. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Thank you. Steve, did you uh, want to talk about something? Uh, well, I, it actually turned out to be the case. I brought something up in an email about a month ago. I was a little curious and maybe even put off why the labor attorney was attending all of our board meetings. I don't see the labor attorney on. Oh, actually, I think he is on. Maybe I do see him on. And, and uh, I, I think, you know, it's fine for executive sessions and whatnot, but I think it's a waste of, uh, of money, quite frankly, to have a, a, two attorneys on a board meeting when only one is probably required. And I had sent an email about this about a month ago and no, nobody replied. So I'm bringing it's, it up it's, now. It's, sure. it's being addressed. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Right. If I could just uh, jump on, I appreciate the mayor saying I have had discussions um, and uh, there are some ways that, uh, you know, sometimes I'll request uh, the labor attorney to be there. If there's a labor matter on, um, sometimes there may be something for executive session. So um, we can address perhaps if there is an executive session, and this came from uh, Mr. Glickle, perhaps can 
having that at the beginning of the meeting rather than at the end, something like that. Um, but that's definitely something that we'll be talking about. Thank you. Okay. Next, I have a um, resolution authorizing the modifications to the consulting agreement with Christine Anderson that we spoke about briefly at the workshop, authorizing the modification to the agreement with Christine Anderson to perform consulting services for the Suffering Justice Court. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> motion passes. Next, I have a resolution here accepting the resignation of Ann Rizzo, Assistant Court Clerk, effective December 18th, 2020. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, do I have a second? Second. Trustee, Trustee Stoberman, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next, I have a resolution here continuing the retention of Richard A. Glickle as Village's Legal Counsel for Labor and Employment Matters and for the other or different non-employment or labor related matters. Do I have a motion? Motion, Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan. Do I have a second? Second, Trustee Alpert. Trustee Alpert. Any further on the discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any oppose? I oppose. Motion passes. Okay. Okay, next I believe we are going into an ex executive session. So I have a motion to enter into an executive session. Does it indicate the reason? Um, um, reason would, would be personnel, uh, personnel um, reasons. And litigation. And litigation. Do I have a motion? Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan. Do I have a second? Barone. And Trustee Barone. We will um, resume and come back into the regular meeting. Motion to uh, exit executive session. Motion, Trustee Barone. Okay. Trustee Barone, do I have a second? Second, Trustee Corrigan. Barone, Corrigan. I'm just jotting it down. Hold on. Okay. Is there anything further that the board would like to say? Well, I would just like to know how to get back on visually. You're on. You did it. Yeah. We see you, Fred. Well, all right. I can't see anybody. All I see is scheduling made easy. Uh, all right. More. We're, we're going to close the meeting now. Okay. All right, so motion to close the meeting. Motion, Trustee Alpert. Trustee Alpert, do I have a second? Second, Trustee, Trustee Barone. Trustee Barone, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. You as well. Keep safe. Good night.